Sup, Chooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So, let me tell you something, hair loss witchers. I get a lot of requests from my viewers to cover specific topics related to hair loss and even some other subjects that are unrelated to hair loss. I know it's probably frustrating for some of you when you ask me to do a video on a subject and then the video never seems to come no matter how long you wait. But rest assured, Chooms, that if my channel continues to survive, which it will, of course, I will definitely get to all of your requests eventually. I keep a file with all the subjects that have ever been requested by my viewers, and it is a very, very long list. My goal with this channel is to make it the world's finest source of hair loss information on the entire internet, and with every new upload, I know I am a step closer to achieving that grand goal. So, between breaking news on new hair loss treatments and my attempts to cover certain subjects in depth, I do try to cover some of the more obscure hair loss treatments that my viewers suggest to me sometimes. One of these treatments that I was recently asked to talk about is a drug called Aminexyl, also known as Capexyl, and it probably has other names too that I'm not aware of. The interesting thing about it though is that it has a chemical structure almost identical to minoxidil. As you can see here, some hair chemist took minoxidil and just chopped off the ring at the upper right hand side of the molecule. This may seem strange, but this is actually pretty common practice with prescription drugs. This is what drug companies are constantly doing when they develop new drugs. They take an effective existing drug, then they modify it slightly to see if it is more effective once they do that. This isn't the first time I've even talked about a minoxidil derivative on this channel. A long time ago, I think maybe like four or five years ago, I made a video comparing minoxidil to minoxidil, and I'll go ahead and link that video below in the description. So, what is Aminexyl? Well, it is a very old drug, and it's actually been around almost as long as topical minoxidil. Oral minoxidil was first approved to treat high blood pressure way back in the 1970s, but over the years, it was found that an unanticipated side effect was that it caused hair growth. So, in 1988, topical minoxidil was released in the form of the prescription drug Rogaine. That resulted in what I think was the very first prescription drug commercial on American TV. Keep in mind that back then the laws regarding advertising prescription drugs on TV in the United States was a little different. They weren't actually allowed to say what the drug did, but if you watch this commercial I'm about to show you, you can see a subtle hint since the actor has a really full head of thick and curly hair. You know, a lot of men want to know more about Rogaine with minoxidil. If you're one of them, I have good news for you. Now there's a video prepared especially for men who want answers to their questions about Rogaine. Simply call 1-800-477-8996 and Upjohn will be glad to send it to you, absolutely free. Now once you've looked at it, you'll probably want to schedule an appointment with a doctor. After all, only your doctor can prescribe Rogaine. And if you call right now, Upjohn will also send you the names of doctors in your area who can help you decide if Rogaine is right for you. You'll also receive a $10 certificate as an incentive to see your doctor. For your free videotape that gives you the complete story on Rogaine with Minoxidil and your $10 certificate, call toll-free 1-800-477-8996. So what are you waiting for? Make the call today. But as you just saw, he didn't actually tell you what the drug did, he just said the company could send you an information brochure. So, back in the 1990s, topical minoxidil was shown to be so safe and effective that it was approved for over-the-counter sales without a prescription. 2% minoxidil was approved in 1996, and 5% minoxidil was approved in 1998. Of course, during the 1990s, finasteride was also released, first as a drug for treating an enlarged prostate at 5 mg per day in 1992, and then as a hair loss drug at 1 mg per day in 1997. So, the 1990s were a golden age for the development of different hair loss drugs, and you can just picture that lots of different companies were jumping on the hair growth bandwagon trying to come up with new drugs that compete with minoxidil and finasteride. So it's in that context that Aminexyl was developed in the 1990s by the L'Oreal Company, which is a French company that specializes in hair care and skin care products. The L'Oreal Company has been pushing Aminexyl in its cosmetic products recently, as you can see from this news release from 2022. However, I believe the original patent recently expired, so most likely you'll find Aminexyl and other hair cosmetic products from other companies, maybe under different names. Notice that Aminexyl is not approved as a drug for the treatment of hair loss in the United States or in Europe, but it is approved for use in cosmetic hair products, which is sort of a loophole in the system that's also been exploited by Kintor to allow them to sell pyrolutamide even though it hasn't been approved as a drug yet. So just to show that Aminexyl has been a hair loss treatment that has been lurking in the background for a long time, I found this article by Dr. Truog from way back in 2001 that says that 
7% of men going to the dermatologist in Switzerland had been on Eminexol. I don't think this has been a popular drug up until recently, but now that it is off patent and with it still being pushed by L'Oreal, I think more and more people are going to be asking about it, especially since it's related to minoxidil, which of course is a very popular hair growth stimulant. Also, there's some new research on the drug that just came out that I'll go over later in this video. So, how does this drug, or excuse me, I mean cosmetic product, actually work? Is it as good as minoxidil? Could it be an alternative to minoxidil for minoxidil non-responders, perhaps? Or could it even be an upgrade for existing minoxidil users? First of all, like a lot of other hair care products, there are a lot of unsubstantiated claims or outright misinformation about how Aminexol works. For example, here's a site that claims that Aminexol is a 5 air blocker like finasteride, but that's complete nonsense. If it works at all, then it works as a hair growth agonist, kind of like minoxidil. I could find no scientific data to back up the claim that it is a 5 air inhibitor. It simply is not one of them. So let's go ahead and take a look at what L'Oreal said about Aminexol in a recent press release. According to their internal research, Aminexol inhibits an enzyme called lysol oxidase. Lysol oxidase is an enzyme that is involved with the formation of cross links between collagen fibers. So a drug that blocks lysol oxidase would actually break up collagen fibers. L'Oreal claims that their research shows that Aminexol prevents the clumping of collagen fibers and makes the collagen in the skin more uniform. The summary from L'Oreal speculates that in people with hair loss, there is increased collagen deposited around the hair follicles, and this collagen somehow inhibits the supply of oxygen and nutrients, or as Sverige would say, nutrients. In addition, the researchers at L'Oreal found that Aminexol decreased inflammatory factors in the skin and decreased enzymes that break down collagen. Supposedly, there were also increases in the expression of proteins that are involved in the maintenance and regeneration of skin cells. So this is all complete speculation, and none of this research actually suggests that Aminexol attacks the real root of hair loss, specifically the trash hormone DHT. However, minoxidil doesn't affect DHT either, so maybe Aminexol stimulates hair growth through other mechanisms mechanisms, just like minoxidil does. So, L'Oreal tested Aminexil on 105 Japanese women for six weeks and just asked them vague questions like whether the volume of their hair increased or whether the strength and resilience of their hair improved, and the majority answered yes to those questions. So this is a totally subjective, uncontrolled study. It is completely worthless, but it's the kind of study you do for a cosmetic product, not for an actual hair loss medication. However, L'Oreal also gave us the results of two studies on men with moderate hair loss. The first study was a placebo-controlled study of 232 men that looked at the percentage of hairs in the telogen phase. The second study looked at the hair density of 119 men over six months of treatment with Aminexil versus control. As you can see in these graphs, Aminexil decreased the percentage of hairs in the telogen resting phase and increased hair density compared to the control groups. The fact that there were fewer hairs in the telogen resting phase with Aminexil compared to the control group means that Aminexil was converting hairs from the telogen resting phase into the antigen growth phase, so it was stimulating hair growth. So, this is a much better study than the study on Japanese women, but since it is just published in a newsletter from L'Oreal and not in an actual scientific journal, it's completely impossible to fully assess these results. There's always the possibility of bias in data like this. So, what data do we actually have on Aminexil that's actually been published in scientific journals. Well, what we have is, you guessed it, a rat in a mouse study. The first study is this one here published in 2016. It's titled, quote, Topical Products for Human Hair Regeneration, a Comparative Study on an Animal Model, unquote. The study compared three different treatments. The first treatment was 2% minoxidil, so not even the more common 5% minoxidil that is usually used today. The second treatment was a hair loss product containing 1.5% aminexil, as well as arginine, and something else called SP94 peptide, which is another substance that is supposed to improve hair growth, but without any real research behind it. Although as someone who has been involved with various hair loss communities since the 2000s, I have to be honest, I've never once even heard of this SP94 compound. The third treatment was a hair loss product called Carium, which sounds even more bogus. It contains thermal spring water, vitamin B5, and arginine, as well as something else called maticasicide, which is supposed to be an anti-inflammatory agent. Well, not not surprisingly, 2% minoxidil was easily the winner in this study. It blew aminexyl and carium completely 
completely out of the water. In fact, even the control group did better. So Aminaxil is not even as good as the placebo treatment, at least not at 1.5%. And remember, this was just 2% minoxidil that was used in the study. So if they used 5% minoxidil, it would have been several light years ahead of it. So these results in rats are extremely unimpressive. So you'd think at this point, we can just go ahead and laugh off Aminaxil as a joke treatment, kind of like scalp massages and broccoli and just move on. However, the reason that isn't the end of the Aminaxil story is because of this article published just this year. It's titled, quote, Capexil versus Minoxidil, in vivo comparative study on hair growth, hair growth promoting factors, and toxicity, unquote. Remember, Capexil is just another name for Aminaxil. They're the exact same thing. Yet again, this is a mouse study. However, unlike the rat study, this mouse study compared 5% Minoxidil with the stronger concentration of Aminaxil at 5% Aminaxil. So, Aminaxil did much better in the study than in the previous study that used lower concentrations of both minoxidil and aminexyl. The trichogram data were better with aminexyl than with minoxidil after 14 days of treatment, though after 28 days of treatment, the effect of aminexyl and minoxidil were statistically the same. Looking at hair weight, the follicle count, and the percentage of hairs in the angin growth phase, aminexyl actually beat out minoxidil in all these parameters. Aminexyl also increased certain hair growth factors like VEGF and HGF. So, the researchers felt that this higher concentration of aminexyl showed promising results and should be used in human studies. Unfortunately though, it looks like all the human studies of aminexyl have used concentrations of just 1.5%. And because there are no human studies using 5% aminexyl, we don't really know how well it would be tolerated, like whether it might cause scalp irritation or other problems. In addition to the studies done by L'Oreal, there are a couple of human studies that are linked below, including one published in Spanish, but these studies were observational studies that had no control group so they are really no better than the L'Oreal studies I already mentioned. The largest study, which was this one here, followed 527 subjects with mild androgenic alopecia, whatever that means, who were treated with aminexyl at 1.5% in combination with other ingredients. However, there was no control group here, and the results were based on evaluations by dermatologists without sophisticated trichograms or other more objective measurements. Supposedly, hair loss improved in 89% of subjects, which sounds great, but again, without a proper control group, that number really doesn't it means squat. So this was obviously a very low quality study and it was funded by a laboratory that is owned by L'Oreal company. So for all we know, these subjects could just be paid shills for the company. So Here's the Witcher contract we're dealing with here, Jones. Aminexyl, also known as Capexyl, is a hair growth product that has been around for a long time, almost as long as minoxidil. It has been used in cosmetic products at a low concentration, but it has not been approved as a drug for treating hair loss. It might work by affecting collagen formation or maybe by stimulating growth factors. I found no evidence, however, that it blocks the 5 air enzyme like finasteride and dutasteride, despite the claims of some marketers. So, at best, Aminexyl would be a growth stimulant and not a fundamental treatment of androgenic alopecia like an asteroid is. Up until this point, the human studies have been low quality and the animal research has been disappointing, at least until this year with the publication of the study that looked at 5% aminaxyl in mice and found it actually beat 5% minoxidil in certain parameters. But remember, Chooms, there are no human studies using 5% concentration and it's doubtful that they will ever be carried out since 5% aminaxyl would have to be classified as a drug and not as a cosmetic product. And since aminaxyl is now officially off patent, no one is going to invest a lot of money into doing experiments expensive clinical trials for it. So, I have to admit, I am curious about 5% aminexyl. I think it's possible that it may be a powerful hair growth stimulant, but without quality human research with proper controls, I can't possibly recommend it. In fact, I don't think it's even available to consumers unless somebody can find a gray market source for it. Personally, I doubt it would be significantly better than minoxidil, if any better at all, especially given how a lower concentration of minoxidil at just 2% absolutely blew 1.5% aminexyl out of the water. And since it doesn't treat the fundamental cause of androgenic alopecia, which is DHT, of course, at best, it would just be an alternative growth stimulant to minoxidil. So who knows? Maybe we could convince Brian Johnson to do a human research study on 5% aminexyl, but it seems pretty doubtful to me. So I'd recommend just sticking with what we know works, specifically finasteride or dutasteride plus 5% topical minoxidil if you need it. But if you can't use minoxidil under any circumstances and you're desperate for some alternative hair growth stimulant, then stamoxidin would be the next best choice. Choice. But since the aminexyl that is available to us is just 1.5% aminexyl, which didn't even do better than the placebo treatment, I wouldn't even consider it. It's basically complete trash. All right, Jims, I think that's it for now. So thank you so much for watching. I'll be back with some more preem hair loss content in the near future. God bless.